But what Greb wanted most was to become heavyweight champion. Jack Dempsey was the heavyweight champion at the time, and Greb would constantly ask Jack Kearns, his manager, for a shot. Kearns would laugh at the notion. Greb would be outweighed by over 30 pounds. But one day, Greb arrived at Dempsey's training camp and made the same offer to the manager. I want my shot at Jack Dempsey. Kearns wanted to have a little fun and decided to let Greb spar with Dempsey for a few rounds, hoping that Greb would see the silliness in his proposal. And the fact that the bout would be competitive turned out to be a silly one, only not in the way Kearns thought. He could only watch helpless as Greb gave Dempsey such a beatdown that the session would be called to a halt in the third round. Dempsey would never give Greb a shot at the title. Instead, Greb would take on future Dempsey nemesis Gene Tunney and would give him the beating of his life as well, bloodying up the fighting Marine and handing him his first ever loss. They actually, there were negotiations and promoters who were trying to put that fight together um, really before Dempsey ever became champion. In 1918, um, I believe, there were, there were promoters that were trying to match those two. Um, all the way through 1925 was probably the last time an actual offer was floated for it. But um, the closest they got was uh, in 1922, Greb um, fought Tommy Gibbons for um, a title eliminator. And Gibbons was considered to be, you know, the odds-on favorite. He was going to win, you know. Um, they were really pushing him to fight Dempsey. And, you know, Greb was almost an afterthought. He was, he, you know, he was this middleweight. You know, he was considered a great fighter. But, um, you know, it was thought that uh, Gibbons coming off of, I think, something like 22 straight knockouts was just going to be too much for him. He was going to defeat Greb, and they were going to go into this massive promotion between Gibbons and Dempsey. Well, the fight comes, and Greb shows up in perfect condition and um, dominates Gibbons, really. I mean, I think outside of a couple of rounds, Greb took the fight easily. Um, Dempsey was ringside, called it one of the greatest fights and greatest performances he'd ever seen. And, um, you know, then the talk started for matching the two. Uh, Dempsey said, you know, I'll fight him. He's earned a shot. Anybody that weighs 170, 175 pounds is a match for anyone in the world. So he was all for it at that point. Um, they, Dempsey and Kearns made, I can't remember if Kearns accompanied them, but they went to Europe. They went to uh, Britain, France. They did a tour for the summer. During that time, Greb slaughtered Gene Tunney, um, the only loss of Tunney's career officially. And um, when Dempsey came back, he had totally changed his tune. Um, he said, you know, Greb's too small. He's out of the question as an opponent, um, which is puzzling. I, 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 to be honest with you, still don't really know what the motivation behind that was. Um, he was really high on Greb as an opponent beforehand, and, and it totally got a 180. Um, about... Two or three months later, um, undeterred Pittsburgh promoters, you know, Greb's hometown, um, were offering Dempsey a hundred thousand dollar purse plus fifty percent of the gate to face Greb um, in a specially built arena in Pittsburgh. Um, they contacted Kearns. Kearns said he'd reached the, you know, he'd gotten the offer. Um, he would like to talk about it with them, um, and then Kearns went quiet and the promoters didn't hear anything from him. And they tried and tried and tried to get Kearns on the line to figure out what was going on. Um, Kearns actually took a train, passed through Pittsburgh, didn't stop to talk to the promoters, and went straight to New York. And when he got to New York, he said, I haven't heard anything from these guys. I don't know, you know, what's going on. And he pretended he had. He pretended like, you know, he thought the offer was, was bogus. Um Meanwhile, the promoter said, you know, we don't understand why he's why he's behaving like this. We've got this offer out there. We need to find out in time to build a stadium because they were going to specially construct the stadium um, in order to promote the show for a Labor Day event, which was, you know, I don't know, a month away or two months away, something like that. And um, Kearns basically just refused to acknowledge them, refused to acknowledge their offer, and, and the fight died on the table. 
Um, and that's about as close as it ever got. Uh, the great Ali Greb. Now, Ali Greb, and it is a sort of man he was. <coughs> he had over virtually 300 fights. He wanted to fight Jack Dempsey. Dempsey was barnstorming. And he got up to challenge, but they did directly add one go. And Dempsey couldn't get past the jab. I must say he wouldn't, mightn't have done it over a 15 round course or something like that, but that was, he wanted to fight anybody. Now, Harry Greb, he got stopped when his arm was broke by a fellow by the name of Kid Graves. Now, Harry Greb would fight anybody. He was the only man to beat Gene Tunney. And he put Tony in hospital. For fair play to Tony, he won the three fights after. But well, he got the no decisions over in the couple. But what I'm saying to you is this. This is the sort of man he was. He lost an eye in his boxing for years. With only one good eye. He lost that eye against a uh, light heavyweight, a good one, Kid Norfolk. 